Hey there, it's Brittany. I am back with a necklace tutorial. I don't, I'm not 100% sure how this is going to work today. Um, I picked a pendant. Um, I just went into my pendant drawer. I think I showed that the other day. And this is the one that jumped out at me. I don't know why. Red's not my favorite color, but this one said, use me. <laughs> so we're going to use it. It's copper on the top, antique gold on around the sides with like a faux um, red turquoise in the middle. I got this from, I'm pretty sure, Hobby Lobby on sale, part of that Poetic Spirit line. And I just started talking, so Goldie's walking in here. I also then went to some of my um, ethnic tribal African bead drawers, and then the first thing that jumped out at me were these um, African glass beads. I think they came from Home of Beads in that haul, and I know these came from them. They're not exactly the right red, but they work. They're, they, for what I'm thinking, they'll work. Um, and then I went to the other side of my African drawer and got these. They're more on tone of the same red. Um, got these out of the bone drawer. I don't know if we're gonna use all these. I just got a, a handful of beads to, to kind of work with. Got these out of the African drawer. I think these either came from um, I can't think of either one right now, the name of either one, but I'll put the the names right here. I can't remember the names of the stores, even though I've done hauls from them. So these are orange and clear. And then um, I got out some copper beads, beat up copper beads, um, some antique brass rings. I think I got these from Nina, um, two African brass beads. This could have come from several different places. And then some um, inlay bone beads. Uh, two different types are in this bag. So I don't know. I just kind of got this stuff out. Oh, there are three different types. I didn't notice that. This one has antique brass or, or just brass in the middle. This one has inlay and this one is copper. That's interesting. So I don't know if we'll use all of these. Well, we probably won't use all these, but I just kind of got them out to help me be creative. Oh, I dropped one, of course. And, um, oh, I also got out some leather. I wanna do like a multi-strand leather necklace. I don't, I don't know how this is gonna work. But I got out this black and brown leather. I'm pretty sure it's from Bracelet Street USA on Etsy. And then also like a burgundy leather in case I don't have enough of the black and brown. Um, I'm not sure what diameter it is. It could be either 1.5 millimeter or two two millimeter. So um, obviously this guy's the focal. Okay. I for sure want to use some of these because I just, I really like the, um, it's not mustard. It's, I mean, they might've called it mustard on the website, but it's more, it's like a mustardy melony color, mango color, muted mango, maybe. I don't know. So, um, then, oh, I really like this red, so I definitely want to use some of those. I for sure want to use this and probably these those rings. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to have, it's going to be a three strand necklace, but all strands are going to be the same length um, and they'll be held together by the pendant and the antique brass rings. So on either side, we'll have an antique brass ring I'm just kind of seeing if this leather is even long enough to make a necklace. Well, it's just long enough. One of the black strands is a little too short, but I'll deal with it. So I'm gonna fit. I'm I'm going to worry about finishing off the other end or the ends at the end of the video. However, right now, just so I make sure each strand stays in place, I'm going to place a knot at the top and I want the red one to be in the middle I guess it you know what it doesn't really matter to me but I, I kind of think that would balance it a little bit they'll probably end up moving around anyway just going to tie a knot I might undo that at the end but this is just like I said to keep everything from moving about while I am creating. So um, I'm going to set this aside just for a moment because I want to kind of figure out my pattern and then we could put it on the um, the leather. So 
now that I'm thinking about it, this necklace might not be long enough because of that shorter strand. So that shorter strand, I might not end up knotting because the knots will end up making that strand shorter than the others. Not too worried. What I can do is end up wire wrapping the end and adding on some length in the back with a cone or a bead cap or wire or whatever. So I'm not too worried. I'm going to just do what I want to do <laughs> and then we'll worry about the length of the necklace when we get there. So, okay. So I have my three strands. Okay. Um, I'm just going to put some some beads on each strand um, depending on how I'm feeling so I definitely want to use some of these guys some of these guys and these copper those are the three the major ones that I really really want to use um, I oh, oh, oh and this guy so let me cut open this strand I think we'll just use two of these save the rest for later um, I'm going to use a couple of these. I'm not going to use all of those. I just kind of put them out there. And what the heck, we'll try and get one or two of these on too. Break the copper. I don't see oh, there are two, so I'll get this one too. Kind of want it to be symmetrical, but we'll see what we end up with. Okay, I am going to put on one of these at the back. So I'll have to be very careful to make sure I'm using the same strand on the other side of the necklace. This might be a little more difficult than I imagined. Okay. This is the longest strand I have. So I'll end up putting more beads on it um, because I'll have more leeway with knotting. And I don't actually mind if this one moves around a little bit. Um, I am going to like between here and the next knot just going to knot it here so he's got some wiggle room to move around move about the cabin there we go I love how that looks already I mean I almost kind of wanted just a whole necklace of these guys but that's not what I came here to do so um, I think Next, I'm going to put a bigger bead, one of these guys. I'm going to do the exact same thing, let him travel around a little bit. He's not going over the knots, but he can move around. So there are our first two beads. Love it. And then I think next I want to put in um, one of these. Do I want one of these or one of these guys? Oh, I think I'm going to go with one of these. exact same thing okay I love that like it's not just stationary it's moving around it gives it some interest 
Okay, so next I'm gonna go for one of these. They're called Crobo beads. Um, this guy's, I'm not gonna have him move around. I'm just gonna do a stationary. Get the knot as close as I can down to my bead on both sides. Lovely. Okay. All right, I'm going to do another one of these copper beads. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go grab some different copper beads so I can incorporate them throughout the night. Okay, so I just spent a few min minutes looking for beads that I apparently don't have. Um, I must have invented them <laughs> in that color in my brain, I guess. Um, so I got out these like uh, wavy spacers from Pam. Um, I think these came from Pam too. So I don't know which ones I'm going to use. I got out these even brighter um, copper ones. These are also from Pam. These might be from Pam. <laughs> I love Pam's beads. And then I got these from a, um, a haul from eBay. So I'm just going to set those to the side for a moment. Uh, like I said, I want to... I want to do some of these yellow beads, mango beads, but my thought was I'll just put some flat spacers between um, the few that I do. So I'm just making sure, yeah, that's the right one. Um, do I want this or do I want the others? We'll see. Kind of like that. Not too shabby. Just gonna do three. Move them on down the line. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, so this guy's not going to be stationary. And then I will just, um, I'm going to start on another strand. I don't know how far, where we're going with this one for now. I'm just going to start on the next one. So this one is probably going to be in the middle. It's the, the red one and it's also the shortest one I have. So I'm going to put the least amount of beads on it, the least amount of knots into it. Um, I am going to start in the back with Let's start with one of these bone beads. And actually, you know what, I'm going to put several beads on in the back. Each strand will be unique. So I'm going to move those down. Um, I'm not going to make them stay in place. I'm just going to place the knot a little bit further down so they have some wiggle room. So they have just a little bit of wiggle room there and can probably make this a little tighter. There we go, I love that. That looks so amazing. Let's see how it looks against our other strand. Pretty good. Maybe did a little bit too much room on this guy here, but I am not going to undo it. So he will just be Roman free. Okay, next I am going to do think I don't know if the bead the leather will fit through these mm, no holes are too small for those okay so maybe we'll go with some of these oh. 
And you know what, the hole's a little too small, but I'm going to angle my cut on my leather. Perfect. I'm just going to go for ten. That's number ten. Move these down to the back. Okay. Oh, I love how that looks. And they sometimes they'll fit together and sometimes they won't. Don't care either way. I'm not going to, it's going to be a looser knot so they can wiggle around a little bit. So there's our next section. I love that. Love it. Okay. And then I want to use um, a contrasting color. Um, I think, let's see how these line up right now. All right. So I think we can use some more of these guys back here. Let's try not to use as many knots on this one, but you know what I think I'm going to do? Take these guys off. I'm going to see if I can undo this knot and just move it down a little bit further. So these copper spacers rest lower on the necklace. They can move around a lot. Put on a bunch more, but I think I'm just gonna leave it with the little, just the 10. Okay. So, here are two strands so far, and I know some of you are like, what is she doing? But it's gonna come together. My vision is coming together. It looks, it's gonna look much better than this, but it's making me happy right now. Okay, so uh, now I want to put some more beads on this other strand and I'm trying to decide if I just want to mirror this strand, but I don't think I do. Okay, I think I'm going to start up the top with one of these. Again, he'll be able to move around a little bit and then um, I want to use a focal actually yeah we'll use one of we'll use one of these I know I'll use the copper one too later but this one we're using this one right now Bring a little hint of that red in there. I 
I just love that I get to use all these different beads on this necklace. And I know many of you have been saying, hey, I want to use all those beads I bought from Home of Beads. Well, if you have any any African, any eclectic or tribal beads are going to work for this kind of necklace, as long as they have the bigger holes. So it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Just a good idea to use your more eclectic beads. Okay, now I'm going to put on this guy. And he is going to stay stationary. Okay, so here are our three strands so far. Don't worry, it's coming along. Might look like a little bit of a hot mess right now, but it's gonna be so cute. Okay, so here, I'm, I'm just gonna measure really quickly where it falls on me. I think I'm gonna go a few more inches, just like two or three more inches with the beads. And then we will do the next section, actually like two more inches with beads. So this guy, what are we gonna do next on this one? I think I want our copper guy to be next here. Again, this one is just going, it's not going to stay up here, it's going to be down here because I'm trying to use less knots in the red. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, one of the black strands might be the shorter one, but whatever, whatever. Okay, so there we go. He's a mover and a shaker. And then no, the red one is the shortest one. Okay, I had to double check. And then this guy I think I'm going to make sure I have another one. Yeah, I'm going to put on one of these coppers. He's got some floof in the middle. There we go. And I think I'm going to actually put on one of these two with the copper. And we will have some, a little bit of wiggle room. doing on this side I think on this side we'll do some more spacers but maybe antique brass spacers Okay, so I just did five. Love it. He's gonna have some wiggle room. You guys are probably real sick of me saying wiggle room. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. There we go. Okay, so right here, I am going to take one of my two brass rings and I am going to slide it on to all three strands without knotting. Okay, so just 
kind of straightening this out. So now if we're bringing it straight down, they're meeting at this ring. And I, I, you know what, I think if I knot it here, it's still going to slide over the knot because it's so large. I don't mind if it slides up there, but I really want um, it to stop right here. So like it's fine, I'm, I'm fine with it sliding up and down, but I want a knot here. So I think what I'm going to do is find a bead, uh, three different beads, one for each strand to go here. So I have them straightened out. Sorry, I'm gonna be moving this here. Um, I think I'm gonna go with one of these on my outer strand. For now, I'm just sliding it on, I'm not knotting yet. And then I am on my mi middle strand. I am going to go with one of these guys, maybe three of these guys actually. I think that'll be kind of cool. Actually, I'm going to grab these copper spacers from Pam. I love that there's like a mix of different metals on this necklace. Another one of these beads. Again, I'm not going to knot yet. I'm just trying to figure out where everything is going to lay. And then last but not least, we'll go with this guy. And let's see what we will do. I think we'll go, so we have orange and red I think we'll go with we'll go with one of these guys. Yeah, that sounds sounds about right. Okay. So these three beads are or three beaded sections are what is going to hold this brass um, ring in place. So I think what I'm going to do, and if we can see that that brass ring, I really want the, I'm trying to get these all to be the same length here. I'm gonna bring this ring down. There we go. Like I said, I don't mind if it slides up there, but I want it to have, I want it to be even. Okay, so I have all three strands um, done. Now we're going to knot them. Let me move this guy down a little bit. And I just have to figure out where I want this ring to stop. And I actually think, now I think this is a great place right here. I want it to stay in place. So I th think, I can accomplish that with just putting this bead. Yeah, it's not gonna move if it's hitting up against that bead. So what I'm going to do, make sure my strands are the same length, make sure my ring's in the spot I'd like it to be forever. Do a knot here.
so that my orange bead doesn't move anywhere. <clears throat> Put my orange bead on. Do another knot so he doesn't move again. And then I just have to decide where, how I want my um, other two strands to lay. I think right here would be good for this orange, or I'm sorry, for the red one. I have to keep re repositioning the necklace to make sure it's working. All right, so I want my knot to be right there. these to be pretty stationary. They're, they can move around a little bit. Just a little bit. And then my bone bead. Bone beads just going to kind of hang out in the middle. Have him move around a little bit too. Okay, so going up the neck, the other side of the necklace is going to be a little bit more complicated because I'll have to make sure that my knots are semi. Um, symmetrical uh, so that each side looks like they're symmetrical so I'll have to kind of measure knots and things and spaces between um, each piece but I'm up for the challenge because I really like how this necklace looks all right so here we are so far the back I'll show you how to finish that off when we're done and then um, the ring brings all three strands together and I'm just going to measure it um, so I'm going to add on my pendant now i'm a little frustrated because this red leather is a little too short but i can try and tie on a different color leather or a different similar leather towards the end so we're just going to grab all three strands okay All right. So there we go. And I am just going to go up the other side like we did on this one. I'm not gonna film it because it would take forever. <laughs> and then I'll show you where we'll, where we'll go from there. Okay, so that took a while, <laughs> but I have a fantastic necklace and I'm so lucky that that red, I mean, it, I literally had enough just to do up the rest of the, the necklace. So um, the only bad thing is I didn't have enough to knot it at the other side. So I ended up wire wrapping. I'll show you how I did that. Um, this is how the one side's gonna look. I'm going to at least wire wrap part of it with you um, using another ring. I don't, I've had these rings for a very long time. No idea where they came from, I'm so sorry. Um, so here is, I'm just gonna, Put the backs together here is our necklace and it is stunning i am in love with this necklace and it's it's right now it's just long enough to hit right at my um like breastbone but i want it to be very long so uh, the good thing is now that i have this loop i can put some chain in the back i can just put some more leather in the back um I haven't really decided how I'm going to finish it off. So maybe by the time I'm finished wire wrapping with you, um, I'll, I'll know. <laughs> Again, it's like 1030 at night. I don't know why I start these products so late. Oh, it's because I have a day job. I forgot about that. But um, yeah, it works. I, I don't know. I 
only get my beading done at night these days and or the weekend. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this side. I'm getting out some clamps so my beads don't come off, although it wouldn't be a disaster if they did because it's only one segment since it's mostly knotted. But why not save ourselves some trouble? Okay. Dollar Tree is where these clamps came from. Best buy ever. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that my um, strands are in the right order. It's been really hard to keep them together um, in the right order uh, throughout the process. So I'm kind of like, I just want to give up, but I can't, <laughs> I can't. I just need to, to get through it. I am just going to, um, put one on and then I'll kind of figure it out. Let's see. Oh no, it, they flipped around on me. There we go. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because they're going to be tangled anyway. I think this is the only time we're going to see them straight. I think once they get it gets in my jewelry drawer, it's just going to tangle up and it, that might be a better look anyway. But anyway, for right now, I'm just going to start with one strand and then I can kind of figure it out from there. Okay, so I am just going to slip this through my ring and down like that. Uh, I want to make sure I, this strand had um, a little bit of wiggle room for that bead, but not as much as showing right there. So I'm just going to bring it down like that. Um, I'm using this Parawire by Vintage um, in Artisan Copper. So I got this at Hobby Lobby when it was half off. Pretty good deal. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna pull the leather through, leave a little bit of wiggle room here. Now I'm actually gonna leave a little bit more than that because we have to have enough sp uh, for a spot for us to wire wrap. So I'm just going, it doesn't matter if these twist or overlap, it's just not, you're not going to see it once it's wire wrapped. Sorry, and this can be pretty messy depending on how you start it, so. Um, just trying to bring my wire around and I try and get them the coils pretty close together sometimes with starting off it doesn't happen that way but do the best you can it's all you can try for okay and this definitely has a learning curve because um, I did not start jewelry making knowing how to wire wrap even basic so and sometimes it still gives me trouble so push those together and actually my longer piece is on the wrong end so or wrong side so I'm just gonna wrap with my shorter piece going up towards the copper ring and if I need to I can wrap down some more with the longer tail I'm going to use pliers too. It's just easier for me to use my fingers when I have the camera in front of me. Um, too many, <laughs> too many tools sometimes end up in me jostling the camera or just ruining my piece. <laughs> okay. This goes much more quickly when I'm not doing it on camera, by the way. Okay. And then I'm just going to start wrapping down just a few coils. And then pick a common side to where you'll wrap um, the end of your wire. And so you can cut, them, cut it off on the same side for both ends. So I'm just going to pick that as the back. Get as close to my wire as I possibly can without cutting anything else. And then you can tuck that in if you need to. I think that's pretty close. Make 
make sure it doesn't snag your skin or anything sweater whatever and then uh, I'm gonna take my same snips go up as close as I can without cutting my other piece of leather and just trim that off so there's our connection point Isn't that fun okay so we're gonna move on to the next one Okay, so we have all three connections on this side finished, and we have all three connections on the other side finished. So let's see what it looks like. I might have to zoom out a little bit for you guys to be able to see. Now, let me do that. Okay, oh my gosh, I, it, even though it's a little bumpy, it, it came out way better than I could have anticipated. Um, I am just in love with this color palette, which is surprising to me because it's not my normal color palette. I don't usually go for reds or yellows or, you know, these darker, richer colors, but I love it. And there's always something for your eye to be drawn to, um, whether it's the copper or the antique brass or the red or the, the mustard. I'm really happy with this. So now I have to decide... Um, what, how to finish it off. So like I said earlier, I'm just going to hold this up to me while I'm talking to you. Um, it's not long enough for me. I really wanted it to be a very long necklace. And right now, um, if I just put a clasp on it and, and left, it would just hit right at my breastbone. But I wanted it to hit below my chest, like like 40 inches maybe. Because I'm very tall. I'm almost six, uh, 5'11". So almost 6 feet tall. So... Um, I think I want to add some leather here going up the back and maybe some more some more beads but I think this was a good enough tutorial right <laughs> I don't know I don't know that I could top this almost um, let me see what I have and we'll okay I grabbed a few choices and I don't know which direction I want to go so I have this um, like rust red it's three millimeter from bracelet street America and it works it works because of the red and the burgundy and the, the middle strand um, I have this lighter brown twisted or like braided I think this is full leather it's got to be um, and this is from Hobby Lobby bolo cord brown yeah P leather so that works too, but I, I think that might take it in a more like rodeo direction. <laughs> um, I have this just brown three millimeter leather, goodness, which is really nice too. I think that really works. It's too bad I don't have any more of that black and brown. I'm gonna have to order some. And then I also have these. These are also from Hobby Lobby in a, the, the leather working aisle. They have scrap bags. And I have a ton of those scraps. Um, so these are flat, not just cord. So let me take a look at our end endings here. So if I go through it like this, you can go up the, I think I like I think I like this. I have one necklace that I did this with before. I like this uh, thinner. Mm, do I like the thinner one or the thicker strap? And I could choose the darker leather, but I like the more finished side. Um, you know what? I think I like the thicker one better. Another thing you could do is set an eyelet in here. I don't think I, I do have eyelets, but I don't know where my eyelet setter is. I think it's in my closet where all my other scrapbooking stuff is. But this would be really cool with if you set an eyelet or something there, like a snap or something. Um, I'm not going to do that today. Like I said, I don't know where mine is. Um, but I think I am just going to, or you could just cut a hole in the leather. You could do that. So I could hold, I could wire wrap it like I did there, 
or I could grab my metal snips and see if I can punch a hole in the leather. If you have a leather punch, that would be great too. Yeah, this is not going to be big enough. So again, my um, eyelet punch would also help. Oh, this worked. Yeah, that worked. So I have a hole in it. I could just grab um, a thick gauge jump ring. Cut this a little better. Okay, so it's off center. I'm gonna redo that. I didn't really expect it to work, guys. <laughs> I thought it would be a little too thick. So I'm gonna go up a little bit more. Punch in a hole. Okay, and then what I'll do so I could either, you just wipe or wrap it onto there, but that would defeat the purpose of having just a hole. So I'm just going to grab a thicker gauge um, jump ring and put it on. So the, the good thing about this is it's a really long piece of leather. I can just adjust it to the length I want, and then um, I won't need a clasp on the back. I could just attach it on both sides. So let me find a jump ring. Oh, these are cool. Um, I got these from Pam. They're ovals. These are perfect. Gosh, Pam was coming in clutch today because I used the spacers from her and now these jump rings, which are amazing. They're oval and they're perfect for something like this. So let me open and they're thicker gauge. I have some that are very thick gauge, but I like the fact that these are oval. It's amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and that through my leather. There we go. And I'll find my end here. I don't think this through. Okay. There we go. And then we'll just close in the back. Kind of just closing it temporarily because Oh, it closed really easily. It looks good. Um, I need to measure it. So I'm going to pause in a, just a moment and measure on my person to see how long I want this leather back part to be. I'm tempted to wear this to Tucson this weekend. People probably look, heck are you wearing? <laughs> Okay, so I marked it here. I'm going to cut it right there. And I have to be very careful <laughs> making this hole. I don't want to mess it up and make it shorter. Okay, and then we have our connection point. Just make sure, I wanna make sure that my leather is all facing the right way to go around my neck. Okay, so I had to assemble that while I was on me <laughs> to make sure the leather didn't bow or, or bend the wrong way. So here is our finished necklace. Like I said, you can totally, um, wire wrap this on. I just didn't wanna add the bulk and I actually really like the way it looks with those jump rings and I love that they're oval jump rings that they they kind of are more um, conducive to this moving around than a, uh, a round jump ring would be, would have been and it's very very long and it's perfect and it's right it goes right over my head so what do you guys think this was a, a long journey but I'm really really happy with how it turned out so let me show you the two sides because kind of looks like one jumbled necklace if you don't see it separated out. So there you go. Sorry I have such a small area for you to see, but the lights don't really work if, it's, if I back out too much. But I love this. I'm going to put some better photographs of it on my, uh, my Facebook page, my Facebook group. 
So those will be up in about a week or so. But thank you so much for watching. This was a long ride. <laughs> I started at like 8.30 and it's 11 right now, so but I'm really happy with how it turned out. So, and I don't have a piece like this. All right, let me know what you thought, if you learned anything, what your favorite part was. I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay tuned for Goldie. She's super cute. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Jeebus. Yeah. Hi, Goldie. He's a cutie. Look at his little paws. <laughs> He's so cute.